Okay, hey guys, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ferdinand, a second year medicine student and um, I'm gonna try to explain to you today the photocable anastomosis, the cable cable anastomosis and the lymphatic system. If you have any questions about what I'm going to tell you, just um, send me an email. I will link my email at the bottom of my script. So if you have any questions, anything I can help you with, just write me an email and I will try to help you. So um, first we're going to start with the portocable anastomosis. Before I'm going to explain the anastomosis, um, I want to tell you something about the general idea of the cable system and the portal system. Um, because they're, they are the two systems, the two venous systems of the body. So here is a little scream, uh, uh, scheme I draw, drew you. Um, in purple is the cable, uh, portal system and in blue is the cable system. And here's another, like, to show you what it does. The portal system is basically responsible for collecting all the venous blood from the intestines with all the nutrients inside it. So it collects all of this blood and with the nutrients and transports it to the liver, um, where it then goes into the cable system, into the IVC through the hepatic veins up here. And this is the hepatic portal vein, goes into the liver and then is drained by the hepatic vein. And yes, so that's, that's the, the main connection between them and that's the two systems generally and now we have anastomosis between the two systems anastomosis means connection of the vessels and there are five of them that you need to know and if you get this question in your final exam or in your dissection uh, examination there are three steps to every anastomosis first step is the like where it is the location Second step is um, the portal, um, the vein from the portal system or the cable system, and then the second one is the cable system or portal system. Um, so only you ne only need to mention those three points, and I will get to the clinical significance later, which you can also mention after stating those three um, facts about each uh, anastomosis. So I'm starting from superior going to inferior. Um, the first anastomosis, the location is the lower esophagus. So this is the stomach, esophagus goes up and it's at the, located at the lower esophagus. The vein of the cable system are esophageal branches of the azygous and hemiazygous vein. So uh, hemiazygous azygous, it's not seen here. And the um, portal vein um, for this anastomosis is our esophageal branches of the left gastric vein. So left gastric vein going up here and giving off um, esophageal branches and then they're anastomosing with those. So that's number one. Number two is um, the location is a bare area of the liver. Um, yes, and the systemic or the cable system um, supplies it with the, or drains it with the inferior phrenic vein coming from above. And the hepatic portal vein has smaller branches that anastomose with the inferior phrenic at the bare area of the liver. Perfect. So number three is the location is around the umbilicus. So here. And um, the systemic or cable veins are the superficial epigastric and the thoracoepigastric epigastric coming up here. And from up top, the paraumbilical veins which you can find in the round ligament of the liver. So number four is the, are the retroperitoneal anastomosis. So location, retroperitoneum. And cable um, vein are the ascending lumbar veins. So they go up here uh, in the retroperitoneum and they anastomose, uh, give off branches, tiny branches, and they anastomose with um, generally the, the colic veins of the portal, uh, portal system. So tiny branches, anastomos like around this back area here and um, that's why it's called retroperitoneal. The last one, location is at the rectum. So rectum, you can see it here. It is supplied by three veins. One of them is portal and two of them are cable. 
the portal vein is the superior rectal vein draining into the portal system and the cable veins are the middle and inferior rectal vein there's a difference the middle goes directly into the internal iliac vein and the inferior is drained by the internal pudendal vein which then goes into internal iliac but that's a question they like to ask you and yes so the clinical significance of these portal cable anastomosis is is for example if you have portal hypertension what does that mean hypertension means um, increased pressure in the portal system so that can be caused by anything that blocks the blood flow from the liver to the to the IVC so if you have for example liver cirrhosis or just a general blockage here um, the blood can't go can't drain into the IVC anymore so it will collect inside of this portal system and that means the veins will enlarge because there's more pressure, more blood that can be drained and they will flow back. So the blood usually flows in this direction up to the IVC, up to the heart. But if there's portal hypertension, the, there's back flow. So the blood will flow back and the only way it can reach the systemic or the cable uh, circulation is through these portal cable anastomoses. Uh, that's a clinical significance. If you have a blockage in the liver, the blood will flow back and through these um, porticable anastomoses into the cable um, circulation. So what happens to them? They, we will have something called very close veins, which means enlarged veins. And if they get too large, if the hypertension is too big, they can burst and cause um, very, very bad effects, severe effects. For example, you have um, in the lower es uh, esophagus, you can imagine if, if veins or if blood collects there, it's, it's very um, dangerous for you. And um, one of the most striking images is if you have um, the paraumbilical veins, you have something called caput medusa, which is in my uh, script, which you can see a very disturbing image of just veins popping like enlarged around your umbilicus and then for example this venous plexus around this rectum is called hemorrhoidal plexus so you can imagine if you have hypertension here you can get hemorrhoids okay so that's it about the portal cable anastomosis okay guys um now it's time for the cable cable anastomosis um cable cable anastomosis means that there is a connection between the two cable systems what are the cable systems? Um, the first cable system or one of the cable systems is the superior vena cava and the other one is the inferior vena cava. So cable cable anastomosis are basically the connections between the um, inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. So we have four of them and um, again name the location and where which vein comes from the IVC and which comes from the SVC. Um, so we have two umbilical cable cable anastomoses, one that is subcutaneous and one that is muscular. So the subcutaneous is superficial to the muscular. Um, the super, uh, subcutaneous umbilical cable cable anastomosis is made up from the superficial epigastric vein coming from the IVC, from the femoral vein, and the superior vena cover connection comes from the axillary vein which gives off the lateral thoracic and then the thoracoepigastric so the anastomosis between the thoracoepigastric and the superficial epigastric okay perfect um, we also had these two veins um, in the portocable anastomosis if you remember around the umbilicus um, but they also form cable cable anastomosis on to the second one the muscular umbilical cable cable anastomosis is formed by the superior epigastric coming from the brachiocephalic vein. The inferior vena cava connection comes from the inferior epigastric from the external iliac vein. And they form an anastomosis around the limbic umbilical area again. The third one is along the vertebral column. So um, up uh, alongside it, uh, it is formed by the ascending lumbar veins on both sides from coming from the inferior vena cava and the azygous system and 
then um, the hemiozygous vein and the ozygous vein, then anastomose with um, both the left and the right ascending lumbar veins. And the fourth one is a bit um, more complicated. Um, it's called the Batson's plexus. And it is basically, so the one in blue is the um, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and its tributaries. And the one, the green line here are, are actually two veins, the anterior and the posterior spinal vein. So right now you can just see the anterior one, but posterior to that is the posterior spinal vein. And what happens is that all of the veins that are alongside the spinal column like these ones for example they form a plexus inside and around the the spinal column the vertebral column and this is what i i was trying to show here with the orange linings is that there's a plexus like almost wrapped around the the vertebral column and it it's very hard to tell specific um veins because it's it's like a very very large plexus it goes like the whole vertebral column so i would just say the the most important ones the anterior and posterior spinal vein the these the system here hemiozygous zygous ascending lumbar and then going up into the neck we have the deep cervical vein being a bit more lateral and the vertebral vein going to the vertebral foramina the clinical significance of this Batson's plexus is very interesting. Um, what I was trying to show with this little pink um, thing here, that, that is a prostate. And as you know, prostate cancer is a very, very frequent cancer. And what you don't want to happen with cancers is you don't want them to spread or metastasize. And because this is such a huge range of connections along the whole vertebral column connected to these big veins the tumor can basically move from let's say you have tumor cells inside of this prostate here if it gets into this um into the ivc by this draining system by the prostate plexus it can basically move all around the the vertebral column and can spread throughout the body which is you know as you can imagine very bad what the clinical significance for the other anastomoses are is that if you have again hypertension if one of those two systems um so if there's like an occlusion or a cut or thrombosis uh, anything that would stop the blood from flowing in one of those systems the blood can like in the potocaval anastomosis flow back and then reach the right atrium through the other system so let's say the the superior vena cava is blocked the blood can flow back and still circulate so that's in general that's the reason for venous anastomosis in case there's a blockage in one of the two systems the other system can can still continue the blood flow okay my last topic for my presentation is the lymph system um, I will just talk about the very general things because uh, for anatomy you don't need to know it fully in depth. So I'll just go over the function and the drainage. Uh, I will not go over every individual um, lymph node um, because that would be too much for this presentation. So I will just go over the general principle and the general function. Um, so the lymph system has Three function, it is responsible for the production, the transport and the filtration of lymph. Um, the lymph system includes the spleen, thymus, tonsils, lymph vessels and lymph nodes and the lymph vessels are connected by lymph nodes. Um, the lymph system gets rid of toxins, wastes and unwanted materials and there are lymph nodes scattered throughout the body so all over the body you will um, have to learn the major systems but as i said i will not go over this uh, right now um, one important aspect about the the lymph system is how the drainage works how i go at it is that i know that the lymph system embryologically developed from the venous system so 
it would make sense that it ultimately drains into the venous system, right? And this is exactly what happens. So this is like a very, very general scheme about the lymph system. You have the uh, lymph drainage from the legs with the inguinal lymph nodes here. Then you have the um, abdominal area here, which all drain into the cisterna chile or chile. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and then the cisterna chile goes up the thoracic, drains into the thoracic duct and which then drains into the left venous angle. Not the right one, but the left one. Why is this important? It's important because you have to know that all of the lower body, all of the abdominal region, and all of the left upper body and left side of the, of the head is drained by the left venous angle. And the right venous angle only drains the right arm, right upper body, and the right side of the face good and now um, I have like a bit more zoomed in picture of the right and left venous angle because it's important to know what structures are around it and right here you can see the right brachiocephalic vein left brachiocephalic vein right subclavian subclavian vein and left subclavian vein and the venous angle uh, as you can see here is situated between two of the major head veins or the two major head veins. Um, the internal jugular on the medial side of it and the external jugular on the lateral side of it. And it, that is true for, for both sides, for the right side and for the left side. So it would be the external jugular being more lateral and the internal jugular being more medial. And where exactly does it drain? It drains into the border between the brachiocephalic vein and the subclavian vein. So these two veins, they, they, it's the same vein, but they are given different names. So it is important to know that the right venous angle and the left venous angle are at that border between like, the name change of the vein. So again, border between brachiocephalic vein and subclavian vein, that is very important to know. So thank you guys for watching. I hope uh, I made it easy to understand and easy to follow. And as I said in the beginning, if you have any questions regarding any of the topics that I mentioned today, um, send me an email. And um, yeah, happy studying and I wish you all good luck in your final exams.